I cannot wait in underwear. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even like those either. Sometimes. Unless I have to. Sometimes. All Most the time. Of the time. Yeah, yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> On today's episode of Ride Along Conversation, I was super excited to check out Love, who is the owner of the Culture Vegan Joint in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And um, you know, I'm, I'm super stoked about black vegan joints because I want to know, is the seasoning there? All that good stuff. So come take a ride with me and come take a little taste test with us as well. Come on. My name is Love. I'm the owner of Culture Vegan Joint in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Yay! Ooh. Come on in. So I am here with Love, L-U-V. I love that. <laughs> now is that your God-given name or is that the name that you grew into? I am named after my grandmother. Her name oh. is Lavinia. Oh, nice. Okay. Yep. So, hence love, and yeah. I've always loved my name. <laughs> I, I love, love my it. name. I love it. Okay, so we're gonna do a little speed dating, so we can get to know you, so the audience can also get to know you. Okay. So, what is your favorite season? Spring and summer. Both. I, like I said, what sprummer? <laughs> What did you call it? Sprummer. Sprummer. Okay, and why is that? Why is sprummer? I love the funky booty weather. I do not like to be uncomfortable, balled up Wait, in. But 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 the weather, just remember I just said, okay, I forgot this is summer and my thighs are you it's know, not summer yet. We're still what? in spring. I'm summer not ready. don't happen until like June 20th. I'm not ready. So you so the spring, you love the spring because of the coolness or the the yeah. Everything is springing forth, and then you just like that hot, funky summer. I, just, I love the funky. I, I mean, I, I, I love <laughs> you know, the funky. Right. I just love being able to body expression. I love being able to just be free in my clothes. Okay, and, so quick question. Okay. Because this is, you know, a great debate. Great debate. <laughs> so, bra, no bra. No bra. I have a bra on right now, but I hate bras. I hate shoes. <laughs> so do you think eventually everybody would just be free from now have you found I have found that it is more acceptable like even from our culture if it's okay if someone of another race non-black is okay without no bra or butt cheeks out but it may be frowned upon in our culture what are your thoughts Hmm. Uh oh, are you trying to? So to I, I don't, I don't necessarily deal with this issue See? because mm -hmm. one, because I've always been a little bigger. So for me, shorts that where my butt cheeks are hanging out mm -hmm. are uncomfortable for me. Right. Because I have to constantly adjust them, yep, or yep, they're yep. like too deep in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think right <laughs> now, in there. <laughs> I think right now the cult is shifting yeah. to where everybody, I mean, I see Free white girls with booty. Yes. I, see, I mean, of course, and Latinos and, yes, and that's a black, I see everybody now with, you know, they've been doing their leg workouts. So Absolutely. everybody has booty now. Yeah. And so I think the culture is shifting a little bit mm -hmm. around body positivity and just allowing people to be freely express, um, if, if freely express themselves. Right. But I do think there is some val uh, value system with our older generation that has yes. to do with um, how we present our bodies and a, a lot of it. Or oh, how we even view our bodies. Yes. How we mm -hmm. even view our bodies, like not to really love oh, all of this. Ooh. All of this. But I love, I love to be braless. I mean, I can't wait to take right, my to bra un off. To unleash. I cannot wait in underwear. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even like those either. Sometimes. Unless I have to. Sometimes. All Most the time. Of the time. Yeah. yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we don't oh, need those. We don't need those, y'all. No. We don't need that. And yeah. you don't even have to know, but just some girl out there is free. And let her be free. Let, let her butt cheeks right. flap in the wind, okay? Let her beef curtain be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
So what is your ideal meal? Ooh, something mm-hmm. exotic Ooh. and different. I love Ooh. Ethiopian food. Yeah. I am all about cultural food. Yes. Like, yes. Listen, and because it's so comforting mm-hmm. to experience the the essence of a culture yeah. and how they prepare their food is so fresh. It's so much love put into yes. it. I mean, I have friends who are Moroccan and Mediterranean oh my and, God. and African yes. and, you know, Latino. Yes. And I, I mean, I just have the diaspora. And, and all of them have something in common, like peas and rice. It may be named something mm-hmm. else or it may have an additional season or a season that may be taken out. But... It's like an underlying ribbon, it's, like a un, it's like a connection. A, yes, it's a connection. Yes. Food is connective. Listen, <sighs> I'm telling you when yes. I when I so my ideal dish mm-hmm. is something that is very culturally driven. Yes. it is. Um, it is unique. Yes, and. That's my ideal meal. Mm. I don't have and a first. You got me at exotic. Uh huh. Because I, I just really feel like for myself. Food is like orgasmic. I just love, I just love, I just My love. My favorite word. Right, like, you remember how Wendy Williams used to be like, Shh. she'd be like, oh, <laughs> when I start talking about food, <laughs> your mouth starts to water. You gotta get it, right? <laughs> get the drool, clean it up, right, clean it up. So, being that, well, being that you own a vegan restaurant, I am sure now that it's summertime, and I'm sure last summer or whenever you've gone to a family function, a corporate function, or a any type of cookout, whatever, have you found that it's just like nothing for you? Like some people, are like what? Girl, it's fat back in there. Girl, go eat that. So you have you what? found what? <laughs> I go with the flow. I won't. Okay. I will not pressure anybody to accommodate me, and I will not be offended if they don't. But okay. that also, for some reason, makes them want to accommodate me for whatever reason. So I, I usually find something, whether it's a bag of Lay's Y'all chips. See that? <laughs> Lady did not see me, <laughs> but I saw her. A little rush to get somewhere. Right, a little rush. I find some Lay's potato chips, you know, right. or, you know, uh, I bring my own food. Or, so what's you know, your favorite fun. vegan dish to cook? To cook, so there are these lentil burgers that I Ooh, cook. Oh, I love lentil man. Yeah, it's like a, a lentil chili. Mm-hmm. I just really love. I love. Okay, so I love to make this um, this Irish stew that my dad taught me how to make a long Ooh. time ago. I love okay. that with the sweet cornbread, and I put the cornbread in it, and Ooh. I you know kind of let it sit on top, mm. and then I eat off of it with mm. the spoons. It's so good. Um, I love to cook like the lentil burgers. The lentil burgers are. Um, Mediterranean mm-hmm. inspired mm-hmm. spices. Uh, yep. So those are, and I just make a bunch of those, freeze them, and then I, wow. I will cook them up and eat them. So, do you think? What are your thoughts as it relates to raising or starting your children out in that way? And then once they get to an age where in they can make an informed decision about what they want to eat or what they don't want to eat, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts? Because you like, have children, of course. Yes. Just like religion, mm-hmm. um, I will introduce them. Mm-hmm. I will, you know, allow them to kind of flow because if I'm doing it, it's just easier to just incorporate it with them. Right. But I will allow them to ask questions. And if they see their friends or if they see, you know, their peers or whatever mm-hmm. kind of doing these things, I will just allow them to stay open and mm-hmm. just and not try to impose on them because chances are they always come back. Exactly. Home. Exactly. That is so true. So if you had, um, so if there was a misconception or if there's a misconception that you've heard as it relates to vegan food, what would that be? That the food don't got no flavor. Oh, she didn't let me finish. Flavor. Let me finish. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, I mean, this is literally, okay. or that you don't have protein. Protein is the least worry, is the least. Is the, is the least amount of worry in the doctor's mm-hmm. eyes. I mean, See? It's, eh, people don't have protein deficiencies in our country. See? I love this place. As soon as I walked in, the first thing that kind of stood out to me and made me warm and fuzzy 
was that it was like a community. It was like a family, like the people that came in. It was like, hey, you know, my first name basis and y'all hugged and embraced and you um, were sharing light, like beaming off of each other. And I just really love that vibe. Um, how did you actually speak this thing, like actually believed it, like you thought of it? and then you actually put it into action. Because oftentimes, uh, we may have thoughts and ideas of something um, creative to do, but uh, that little self-doubt that goes on in our head, and we're already talking it down before we even get started. So how was this birth? So first of all, I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do as a teenager. Wow. Uh -huh. I've always been into speakeasies. And yep slam poetry and, yes you know artsy stuff mm -hmm. and so I wanted to open something that was that I could incorporate art and music and food that and spoke you know, to that. drinks and things like that now although it's not that bar type of nightlife yes. vibe right <laughs> it is it's, it, it's incorporating all those things that I love mm -hmm. and so basically I I just it just kind of morphed into that as I got older and I got more clear about what it was that I wanted to do. I knew I wanted my freedom. See, that's the thing, and especially this generation of um, youth that we have, that's what they, that is what they speak about most, is we say, our generation was taught, or my generation was taught, you know, find a job, get a good old government job, become a teacher, work for the military, you know, work at the shipyard, things of that nature. Not live your dream, live your yeah. life. And this generation of children, they're like, no, I don't want to work there. I want to create my own. I want to do my own. So for you to just take it upon yourself and say, you know what, I'm confident enough, I believe enough in myself mm -hmm. to make this a reality. So how long have you been in existence? So we've been in operation since 2018. Okay. Since July of 2018. Mm. So we're coming up on four years. Oh, yay. Yes. You have anything big planned? No, not for real. It kind of just comes. It'll just mm -hmm. come, we'll start promoting mm -hmm. it, and then it'll just happen. see what happens. Mm -hmm. It'll just happen. Everything just kind of happens organically around here. Okay, so what is your specialty here? So our specialty here is waffles mm -hmm. um, and coffee. Okay. So we are a plant-based coffee shop cafe, is okay. what we call it. Um, definitely a social cafe. Mm -hmm. We're very community-oriented. So um, our specialty is vibes. For real, for see, real. See? Everything that encompasses our vibe, mm -hmm. if it's the food, the food is a vibe right the, the people, coffee they're a vibe the coffee is a vibe right I mean, everything that's that's our specialty is it's a vibe okay that's what i'm going with that's what you're going with, <laughs> you're with okay so when you say it's a community thing or you will um allow people to or solicit help Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Because oftentimes we don't or we feel like the help that we are needing or asking for from our family and our family and friends, it may not turn out to be a great thing because of whatever reason. So how have you been able to solicit the help of a community of people that's willing to help? I think collaboration mm -hmm. is big. If I can't collaborate and if it's all like, always a competition or an ego thing, mm -hmm. then I can't I can't find it. I can't I can't really make it vibe with it work. Right. I can't I can't make it work the way that I want and unless I think, there are other hands in the pot. Exactly. Because then we're we not support a master of everything. No. We're not a master of everything, but yeah. it takes a I think an awesome person or well-rounded individual to understand that they can't do it on their own. Mm -hmm. They need other people. And one thing that I can say is mm -hmm. during this whole entire journey, people have supported me. See? I mean, whenever I, I mean, I, I always give, I always give, mm -hmm. give people their flowers. Yeah. When it was time for me to, you know, me and me and one of my partners, mm -hmm. when I had my catering company mm -hmm. before this all happened, mm -hmm. when it was time for us to do an event or do something, you know, we built relationships yeah. where people People would support us and allow us the space to you know do events off their food truck yeah. or you know let us do events in their space or you know give us give us discounted booths mm -hmm. to get ourselves mm -hmm. up and running so there was always 
a community, a community or people or a person who was willing to help elevate the cause. And because of that, it was my duty to pay it forward. And that's what I've adopted. See, that is great. That yeah. is that is really awesome. So why gut health or why um, should we be vegan and why? I don't have a, I don't have the, I don't have the, the, the mentality that you need to be vegan. Mm -hmm. I think okay. that you need to be flexible in your mindset of how your body operates. Generationally, yeah. we have to consider our ancestors and how they ate and that all that has flowed through us. Mm -hmm. African Americans, we have traditionally, although during, you know, during slavery mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, you know, servitude, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have, we have adopted diets that have obviously disrupted our um, DNA makeup and our, you know, our mm -hmm, system. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's so many health problems. That's why mm -hmm. we're so prone to so many things mm -hmm. because we're not eating as a part of our natural, mm -hmm. in our natural habitat. Well, listening really. to our bodies. Your right. body will definitely tell you if something's not, okay, you ate this, this is not right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right. And so our gut health, has a lot to do with that. So your gut controls your emotions, your hormones, I mean, your thoughts, your mental. So many things are pro it's processed through our gut. Anything mm -hmm. that we consume, when we swallow spit, it's processed through mm -hmm. our gut. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mucus, mm -hmm. and all of that is, you know, it's processed in our system and then it has to go through our gut. Mm -hmm. um, food goes through our gut. So a lot of even the decisions that we've made as African-Americans, mm -hmm. We, has affected us. You know, it has it has affected us. So the so the good decisions we make, the bad decisions mm -hmm. we make, sometimes it the, the diet that we partake, if you ever consider consider let's consider um let's consider um economic status, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Go to the areas where there's more money and count the grocery stores in that area. There yep. are less. Yep. Right, mm -hmm. and then the ones that are there mm -hmm. are of top quality. Yep. Then let's go into the economically challenged areas mm -hmm. and see how many grocery stores are there and what type of grocery stores exactly. are there. Usually you see the save a lots or mm -hmm. you see the grocery stores that are supremely discounted mm -hmm. or they mm -hmm. have only processed food. The quality foods. of food isn't exactly. great. Exactly. And so if you consider, if you consider, take all that into consideration, mm -hmm. the decisions that we're making with our bodies have a lot to do with our economic status as well, yeah. because that's what we have, that's that's the environment yeah. that we experience. Yeah. So the healthier people are typically the ones who live in a more economic, mm -hmm. and a, a better economic environment. Mm -hmm. Now that's not to say that that's anything that we have imposed on ourselves, right. but that's how it has, panned out to be right and so once we start making better health decisions mm -hmm. then we can start to see these things be reversed mm -hmm. so um when we stop eating chitlins mm -hmm. when we stop eating you know <laughs> the, and, and pig's feet right right exactly when we stop <laughs> and it's you know and i don't condemn anybody i mm -hmm. don't i don't subscribe to any labels yes we are culture anything vegan joy. in excess is not great that's what it, right. anything you can have you can drink water non-stop mm -hmm. that's not healthy you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying so anything so like you said we're not saying cut it out totally out some things yes yeah but some things not so much mm -hmm. so so it's all i think everything in moderation yes yes that's what i'm thinking So I hope you had an awesome time um, with me today on the Ride Along Conversation with Love. Are you ready to become a vegan? Huh? Huh? I think I was sold. I was kind of sold. I wasn't missing anything. I mean, meat, what? Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another episode of Ride Along Conversations. For more of these types of episodes, you can click here or here. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again. Come on and take a ride.